The USDA is trying to ban the sale of ice cream in New York City? Not literally, of course. What I mean by that is this. In New York City, when the crime rate goes up, so does ice cream sales. So does that mean you should ban ice cream sales? No, because the underlying problem is heat. When people get agitated, crime rate goes up, as does the sale of ice cream. So let's identify what the real problem is. What data was there to say that the driver length should be capped at 48 inches? What data is there that says it should go to 46 inches? We're addressing the wrong problem and we're misreading the data yet again, much like the grooves in 2010. All this data came in saying square grooves are bad, square grooves are this, let's change the rule, it's only gonna affect the PJ Tour Pro. 11 years later, is that the case? No, the average guy has been more affected. Why? Because they misread the data. The data said that 12 or 13 greens are hit in regulation by the Tour Pro and nine by the average scratch player and six by the single digit handicap and the 18 to 36 hole and the handicap hits zero to one green. And therefore, it's only going to affect the Tour Pros because they hit the most greens. But that's misreading the data because 100% of all golfers hit 100% of the greens. It's just that the average player is not good enough to do it with a seven iron and he has to hit a wedge. And what club is mostly affected by the groove change? It's the wedge, the, the higher lofty club. So who's affected most? The average player. Who's had the most difficult time over the last 11 years because of the groove change? The average player. The fact is the PGA Tour Pro didn't even use square grooves in their irons because it spun it too much. So we misread the data and we continue to make the wrong adjustments in the game. So obviously the golf ball is a, is a big issue and people are saying roll it back, roll it back. Well, here's an idea. Instead of rolling it back, why don't we go back to not having the ball be perimeter weighted? What perimeter weighted golf ball? Well, yes. If you remember when the liquid center golf ball was the ball of choice 20 years ago, there was more weight in the center of the ball than there was on the perimeter. And also the liquid center did not spin at the same rate as the outer cover at impact. So at impact, the outer cover was spinning fast and the liquid was spinning at a slower rate. And then when the spin of the liquid center and the outer cover matched, the outer cover's momentum slowed down and the liquid center was faster. And so as the ball would fall from the sky, it would have an increased rate of turn and our misses would be bigger. What if we just got rid of the perimeter weighting so the ball wasn't as stable and we had a more weight in the center of the golf ball? We're gonna get more side spin. And who's that gonna affect? The guy that hits the ball 300 yards as opposed to the guy that hits 200 yards. Yeah, they might hit it more offline, but they hit it so short it's not gonna get in as much trouble as the guy that hits it farther. It's just an idea to start addressing the real issue and not have all these other issues that are taking a lot of the fun away from the game and not really addressing the problem.